I don't wear pink. Today, I'm wearing pink. So either I've run out of all of the clothes that were clean and it's time to do laundry and the only thing that's left is the shirt that was left for me last Christmas by a family member that I don't really care all that much about, or it means something. So today on Fresh Food Therapy, we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna go and to an area that I don't generally go for the purpose of doing something positive. Today, we're gonna make just desserts and we're doing it with a little pink on to, uh, to give our support and our admiration to those that are raising money for cancer awareness and specifically for those that are doing breast cancer awareness. So, are you ready? So the reason why I'm wearing the pink shirt is because the following recipe, which is the heart and soul of this episode, was given to me at a party by a young lady that was walking the Susan G. Coleman uh, Walk for a Cure. She was doing a three day because one of her teachers um, had fallen ill with breast cancer and she was going to be doing the walking. So because she's given me this recipe, I kind of feel that you have to give a little bit of homage to the people that have been there to support you, the people who have been there behind you, and the ones that have given you the tools and the knowledge that you, you presently possess. So this recipe goes out to you, and uh, I appreciate you uh, helping me make so many people happy over the years. What we're gonna do is this one is completely unlike me. It has specific measurements and very strict rules. I like flexibility, I like having some play, this is one of those recipes that everything is very spe specific. And what's really funny about it is all of the measurements happen to go with the way things were measured in old boxes. In recent years, the measurements have changed a little bit. And so you have to get a little, a little crazy, but I'm gonna give you the recipe. What you're gonna do is about 14 ounces of Kraft caramels. They're individually wrapped, and so they are very annoying to, uh, to, to have to spend the time. But you know what? Kraft makes one heck of a caramel, and it's worth the pain and suffering that you're gonna go through for those five to six minutes. Just pick something like, I don't know, uh, Baby Light My Fire, uh, and, and just listen to it at the extended version. You'll be done in half the time of the song. Um, it uses 18 and a half ounces of Duncan Hines moist German chocolate cake mix. They're now in 15.25 packages, so what we need to do is we need to buy one plus a little bit more. Uh, it's gonna use 3 fourths of a cup of Lucerne butter or w whichever butter uh, brand you like. It's gonna use a cup of pecans, 24 ounces of semi-sweet chocolate morsels, and six ounces of evaporated milk. Uh, the cans used to be in six ounce containers and it was perfect. Now they're a little bit bigger. Um, this is a 14 ounce can. What we're gonna do is half it and then half that again so that we have it for the recipe. So what we're gonna do is first, we're gonna unwrap the caramels. And I cheated. Most of them are already unwrapped. But I want you to see what's involved in this process. So when you grab a caramel, there's wrapping paper all the way around. You're gonna just remove it from the wrapping paper and put it into the bowl. Again, listening to a few favorite songs makes this so much easier. Some go easier, some are not. This is also a good thing to be sharing with friends, so if they come over to help you, uh, you can maybe have them unpeel the, the caramels. Once you have the caramels unwrapped and you're ready to go, you're gonna pour three ounces of the six ounces of the evaporated milk into the container. And then you're gonna take the three fourths of a cup of butter and you're gonna unwrap it and put it in another bowl. So it's one and a half sticks. And pour the rest of the evaporated milk over the top of that. 
Now, these two are gonna be uh, melted in just a few moments. If you like, the best and easiest way is to use the microwave. Generally, I don't use the microwave a lot, but for this recipe and, and for what needs to happen, it's the most efficient way to go. What we're gonna do now is we're going to take the cup of chopped pecans and we're gonna add it to the bowl. And we're gonna take the Nestle's Whole House Semi-Sweet Chocolate Morsels. This is a 24 ounce bag, which makes things nice and easy. You're gonna put approximately half of the chocolate chips into the, into the pot. You're gonna reserve the other half for the magical second part of the recipe. And then you're gonna take your German chocolate cake mix. And I put a little bit more into the package from another package, so it brings it to the 18 and a quarter ounces. And you're gonna pour that over the top. For this to work, you need to make sure that you are mixing all of the dry ingredients together before you add anything to it. If you do not, it will not evenly mix and it'll clump up, it will not be as great. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, right now, mix the dry ingredients, the nuts, the chocolate chip, and the batter together to make an even mix. And now, we're gonna go and melt. So once you have the butter and the caramel covered, you're going to take the butter and put it into the microwave and melt it for approximately a minute and 35 seconds until the butter is melted and you can blend the butter and the milk together evenly. Now that we have the butter melted and we've got the batter ready, we're gonna blend the butter into the batter, pouring the entire amount evenly over the top. And now we're going to mix it loosely. It's not going to turn into a smooth batter. It's gonna be a little crumbly. But you wanna make sure that there's no dry mix left. Now that the batter is completely mixed and, and ready to be used, we're going to take a nine by 13 pan and we're going to pam it really well. We're now going to take half of the batter and put it into the pan. Reserving the other half to be used in the magical second baking. We're going to press this batter down until it's an even, very, very smooth, very thin layer. It'll take a little bit of work, but you should be able to get it down to the point where it needs to be. If you find that it's sticking to the spoon and it's giving you trouble, just use a clean, small spoon. This should leave you with a single layer that's about a half an inch to a quarter inch thick. And we're ready to put it in for the first bake. The caramel squares and the milk are put into the microwave and microwave for approximately two minutes. This will warm it up. What you're going to do is you're going to put it in at one minute at a time and continue to stir it in between microwavings to ensure that it melts evenly and becomes a creamy caramel sauce. We just pulled it out of the oven and you can see how it's par-baked. It looks like it's billowingly soft. It almost looks like a finished cookie. What we're gonna do now is very, very simple. We're just gonna take the rest of the chocolate chips and sprinkle them evenly over the top, creating like an armor 
of sheer chocolate. Now over the top of that, we're going to pour the caramel sauce. Be very careful because the plate may be very hot. Try to get it as evenly as possible and make sure that you're scraping so that you don't miss any of that beautiful caramel. Now that you have the caramel and the chocolate chips down, the very next step is just taking the rest of the batter, the half that you put to the side, and crumbling it rough over the top. Just try to get it relatively evenly if you can. And now that it's all layered, we're ready to put it in to the oven. We're now going to take the pan and put it into the oven at 350 degrees for six minutes. This will par-bake the bottom and prepare it for the second layer and the final baking. We have the Better Than Sex Squares completely done and we made two batches. The reason for it is that this one just came out of the oven and this one has been cooled. I know when it comes out that you're gonna want it. Don't do it. Make sure that it's chilled all the way through. If you have to, let it air cool, but then put it into the freezer for a moment or two because if you don't let it cool, you're not gonna be able to cut it well. Now, a portion for the Better Than Sex Squares is a one inch by one inch square. That has all of the sugar that you need for an entire week in a one inch by one inch square. You won't listen to me, you're gonna eat more, but just trust me, go easy on this. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut it real quick into some squares and plate it so that you can see what these beautiful decadent treats look like when they're done. They are very dense, and if you were here and you could actually put your hands on this pan, if I trusted you that much, uh, you would see that this is about 15 pounds of weight for dessert. Be careful. Don't eat that much. Just one piece at a time. So now we're gonna make that amazing dessert, Bananas Foster. We're gonna start by telling you what you need and then we'll begin the prep and from there we'll go right into the story. So what you're gonna need to make Bananas Foster is of course fresh bananas. You're also gonna need a little bit of fresh butter. Okay, a lot of butter. Uh, fresh brown sugar and we're gonna use a little bit of cashews but traditionally the recipe calls for chopped peanuts. You're also going to have, sitting in the wings, a little bit of banana liqueur and rum because that's what we're gonna to use to flambe it and also build some flavor into the dish. If you are not interested in using alcohol because you have little ones or because you don't drink, you can make this dish without the alcohol and it really doesn't make the dish any, any less of a spectacular dessert. But because this is television, we're going to make it flambe because it's visually stunning. You also need to have in the wings, if you're gonna flambe, a little bit of fresh cinnamon powder. We're gonna use that um, in the last moments of the recipe. So to prep, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take some fresh cashews. I use unsalted uh, and all we're gonna do is mince them a little bit. It's very quick, you just have to cut them so that they look like ice cream topping, which is what they're going to be. And that's all you really need. For the banana, it's a little simple, but it's a little bit more complicated than the nuts. You're gonna peel the banana, and then you're gonna slice the banana into strips that will be easily coated.
And now we're ready for the story to start. In New Orleans, there's a restaurant called Brennan's. And in the early 1900s, there was Mr. Brennan, the owner, and his friend, Mr. Foster. And they were having a conversation in the restaurant because they were both on the crime commission. And they were talking about the various things that were happening in New Orleans at the time and whether they need to bring in more police officers and such. Well, all of a sudden, out of the kitchen in a big huff, the executive chef comes out and interrupts their conversation and says, Mr. Brennan, Mr. Brennan, they sent me five times the amount of bananas that I ordered. What am I supposed to do with all these bananas? And Mr. Brennan looks at the executive chef, looks over at Mr. Foster, looks back at the executive chef, looks again at Mr. Foster, turns to the executive chef and goes, I don't know. Isn't that what I pay you for? Well, just then the executive chef realized that he had overstepped his bounds a little bit and he graciously backed away from the table without saying a word and walked back into the kitchen. And Mr. Brennan and Mr. Foster went back to their conversation. Well, about an hour later, the executive chef came out of the kitchen with a big rolling cart and he landed the cart right in front of Mr. Brennan and Mr. Foster. And when he opened it up, there was a pan. And into the pan, very quickly, he threw fresh butter. And while the butter began to melt and sizzle, he reached onto the side of the cart and grabbed fresh brown sugar. And he put some brown sugar into the pan. And what started to occur was a rich caramel sauce started to form. Now, Mr. Brennan was looking on rather unimpressed and rather upset at being interrupted a second time. But Mr. Foster was watching on with the eyes of a child and enjoying this display right in front of him. Well, just then, the executive chef reached under the cart and pulled out three or four fresh bananas and peeled them and sliced them in front of the gentleman. And then, once they were sliced, he folded the bananas into the caramel sauce. And a beautiful smell started coming out through the restaurant. Now, once again, Mr. Brennan is looking on unimpressed and Mr. Foster is watching with wide eyes. He let the banana saute for a few moments and become soft and tender. And then he pulled the pan away from the, the flame and he put it to the side. And he put in a little bit of banana liqueur and a little bit of fresh rum. And he put it back on the fire and tipped it. And all of a sudden it flambéed. And as the flames were, were rising, he reached behind and he grabbed a little bit of cinnamon. And he sprinkled the cinnamon onto the dish, creating a little fireworks display for the table. Mr. Foster started giggling. Mr. Brennan just continued to watch on. And after a few moments, when the fire had died out, the executive chef mentioned to the kitchen and his executive, his sous chef, brought out two bowls of fresh vanilla ice cream and laid them in front of Mr. Foster and Mr. Brennan, and then took the bananas that had been flash sauteed and poured them over the ice cream. And then took chopped peanuts and sprinkled them over the top. He handed the bowls 
to each of them and handed them a spoon. Mr. Foster dove in and began to gulp it greedily. Mr. Brennan began to taste his dessert and was actually quite pleased and quite surprised at how good the dessert was. Well, Mr. Foster finished his in a minute and was asking for a little bit more. But when Mr. Brennan got done, he smiled and he said, that's pretty good. What are you gonna call it? And the executive chef looked at Mr. Foster, looked at Mr. Brennan, looked at Mr. Foster, looked back at Mr. Brennan and said, I think I'll call it the Nana's Foster. So now you have your Bananas Foster and it's that quick to make. Make sure that you always have enough for everybody there because otherwise it turns into a fight and it gets really ugly once again. What we're going to do next is we're going to do the quintessential dessert and the reason why I'm wearing pink today. So let's head into the better than sex squares. There you have it. We have just desserts from Fresh Food Therapy. We had for your pleasure today, Bananas Foster, a little bit of fresh chocolate dipped strawberries, and the most decadent and rich Better Than Sex Squares for your pleasure. This episode could very well be the cause of a surge in trips to Weight Watchers or trips to the gym. But now that you know, go ahead and make sure you share and have a good time. And we'll see you again soon on Fresh Food Therapy.